Stefano. How are you, my loves? I hope you're doing really well. So I, um, yeah, such interesting times. This is really impromptu for me. I actually took all my makeup off and um, was winding down for the evening, but something just came back into my thoughts and um, I realized I wanted to share something with you. Um, and this will be relevant to you really, if, especially if, not exclusively, but especially if, you know, you live in a country that is not necessarily um the place of your heritage or your homeland your motherland as it were um so for obviously for me as a brit um my heritage is african and uh is nigerian specifically and of course i've never lived in nigeria i i've born and raised in britain and now i live in aotearoa in new zealand so that's what I mean when I say, you know, your heritage and your motherland, etc. I'm just observing things. And I, I don't know if I've told you guys this before, but I'm really very observant of patterns and themes. Um, you know, I have a Master of Science as a psychoanalytic psychotherapist. So I guess that's no surprise, really. Um, I've learned to become a scientist. So I think... I, I, it kind of still surprises me that I'm actually very good at it and I'm noticing patterns and, and things and trends. But what I'm noticing now are some of the things that you have probably noticed too on social media and different platforms, of course, have their different ways and their different kind of cultures. And I guess, you know, I've, I've returned to one. I've returned to LinkedIn, not really very fully, very much just dipping my toe back in. So I'm going to tell you a story. And with this story comes a trigger warning because it's it's related to the themes that are going on right now. Um, and there there is a lot of violence around, isn't there? There's a lot of anger and a lot of sadness um, and grief. So those are the themes that I'm going to touch on. If that doesn't sit well with you right now, of course, it's really okay to skip this video and I really hope I will see you in another one. If you haven't already subscribed though, please go ahead and subscribe to the channel and support. Um, so this is a story. Basically, it was what, and you know, I say story, it was video as well. You know, everything is being captured now for better or for worse, you know, uh, 5G, whatever we think about it. We are living in an age now where everything can be captured. Everything is being captured on these amazing devices that we have. This was powerful. Um, and I think everything's coming out of the woodwork now. I'll tell you a little bit, just give you an overview of this very distressing video that I saw. And I won't go into the detail, but it involved what appeared very much like, very, very clearly, um, a black man, of course, um, really being set upon by police dogs and it was just very interesting and and I, I always read the comments for things like that I actually often skip as much as I can of the actual video content because I think we are bombarded with it now and we have to be very careful of our mental health so I, I encourage you to do the same my loves um if you don't already I mean it's not about burying your head in the sand but it's just about keeping that balance and for me especially because I'm you know my my specialist areas are very much um, trauma and post-traumatic stress disorder and, you know, women who have had the most severe um, experiences of childhood abuse. Let's just put it that way before they start screening my, or, you know, censoring my videos. So, so my point is I am also very careful and I encourage you to do the same. But it, I saw enough to see what happened in this video. And and so this, this black man was set upon, un, un, um, unarmed, um, not posing any threat and very clearly set upon by these police dogs and tased as well. And what was horrifying, and someone commented this, it wasn't my comment, somebody else commented that they observed in that clip how this man clearly was aware that it would be better to be attacked by the dogs than resist arrest and face worse a worse potential punishment as we've seen all the time as the whole world is in this uprising now because of the fact that we've seen this over and over and over and over and over again right so so he allowed himself pretty much to be attacked by this dog I mean 
I don't know about you, but I've had experiences with dogs. I've got the scars to prove it. And, and it, it's really quite scary stuff, right? Um, horrifically scary. And I mean, I've never been, I've never been, a, you know, a, a, accosted or whatever by a police dog. I can't imagine because those dogs are really trained to potentially to really do some real damage, right? So the thing that strikes me about it as a metaphor is that I see the same thing as a metaphor not literally <laughs> i get people saying all sorts i don't know if i'll leave the comments open for this but we'll see i've seen the same sort of thing in on 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 place in places like linkedin for example and that's fair enough it's a work platform blah 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 all the things we know yeah yeah we know that i think what's really striking though is that some of us maybe have forgotten or we've been so conditioned to feel as though our way of express, expressing ourselves from our culture, if that's through music, through song, through loud cries or shouts or whatever that may be. I mean, some cultures have really loud funerals, don't they? And they have women weeping and all of that. That's part of, I mean, you know, so... Or, or just quiet tears or whatever that is you know again just to be clear I'm not saying one way is right and one way is wrong here okay what I am really observing though is just that shutdown um that would appear to me to be very much about you know hurting my brand or or doing doing myself damage and this is really and I, I, I really am speaking to some of the people of color that I've observed who are, um, I guess, because of the nature of this kind of bombastic time, it seems really obvious, doesn't it? If 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 there's no there's no um, reflection on what's going on, I I think, you know, the thing is, we're human first, aren't we? We're human, and then we have our jobs, and then we have our whatever our culture and all of the other things. So. But I feel that some of us don't feel able to express ourselves because of the fear of something worse happening, right? Like this, the story, this is horrific, I'm sorry to tell you that story, but I just feel it really illustrates something powerful if, if we take that as a metaphor. And of course, I, it's horrific. I don't know this person who was attacked. I mean, I hope that there is some justice and some investigation and... and and a real a result, not just, you know, lip service and nothing happening. Again, I think it's very clear that, you know, many people now have had enough of that kind of um, process where nothing, nothing ever changes. So I think it, it, it is to me very striking when it's, it's people of colour or black people who are, in my view, choosing not to speak, not to express. I'm not saying that it has to be huge or loud or anything, but just the shutdown is, I think it's really, really interesting. Um, and not necessarily the healthiest or the wisest decision. It's really strange, isn't it? There's, there's a real, this really kind of paradoxical, I think, I kind of loved what um, I heard from Gary, Gary V recently. He posted, he may have seen it if you follow him as well um, on social media platforms. He, he made a video and he's, he's done some written content. Just, you know, really encouraging, pleading actually with people, particularly allies really. I felt that the message was for allies of black people to use their voices, to, to speak up, um, to not tolerate injustice when it's seen, to really do something. Um, that the moment of just being silent and not being overtly racist, those days are gone and that is insufficient now. Um, and I think, of course, we could easily say, well, of course he can speak up. He's got a massive platform. He's white himself. There aren't going to be the same consequences for him speaking up as there would be for maybe a person of colour or a black person. Mm. He's one example and a very kind of high profile example. Obviously, I'm seeing 
really amazing things coming out of very everyday people like all of us daring to speak, um, daring to use the platforms we have for reaching out across the world, really, because we are this global community, aren't we? Um, and acknowledging the pain. I think, to me, as a psychotherapist, obviously, that seems the healthy and empathetic, correct course of action to acknowledge. You know, it doesn't have to be, as I said just a moment ago, it doesn't have to be loud. But I think to say nothing in these times is also a huge statement, right? I guess I really just want to encourage you, if you're watching this and you maybe have been on the fence about, oh, I don't really want to get involved or whatever, um, you have to do what you feel is right. You have to do what feels congruent and true and real for you. That's that's it. You know, we all are doing our best. It's not about judgment. I think, I guess the thing that's important and that I've kind of been observing is just that one silence, hopefully, is not inadvertently or unconsciously without intention causing harm to another person. And I mean that if someone is commenting on, on the current state of affairs and particularly the, the murder of, of George Floyd and police brutality, you know, on black people or whatever they're sharing about, just be mindful that you don't cut across that in a, in a way. It's better to stay silent in a way than put an inane comment on someone's content or in, in that regard, you know, rather than saying, oh, the sky looked particularly nice today and they're pouring their heart out and you, you know, you say that. So I think that's just one thing just to keep in mind. The only other thing I want to say to you, my loves, is that um, also if you're not black, don't feel afraid to ask us how we are. I think this is part of the, the package of difficulties that we're seeing around the world that there's there's fear there's fear of approaching us and fear of saying the wrong thing i mean i get it i work with trans people right the pronouns and all of that you know it, it is kind of like oh god I, i'm gonna i'm gonna stuff it up but actually stuffing it up with the good intention behind it is far better than um just zipping everything up because your black friend if you're white say watching this your black friend may think do they not care? Do they not see? Um, and unfortunately, the world has kind of given the impression that we are these strong, brave, fearsome creatures. Um, but actually, you know, we hurt. Um, you can't see it in our in our faces in the same way as you can with white skin. You can't see the veins popping. You can't, in my dark eyes, it's it's different. It, it expresses itself differently. Um, and when we feel safe, it may come out in a big eruption of emotion because, you know, really that's part of our heritage as, as people of African heritage. Dance, song, music, passion is in our DNA. So I think it's important to, to kind of be mindful that, you know, intention is super important, super important. Um, I stuff up with my trans patients sometimes and I, I, I ask for their forgiveness and I apologise and I, and I learn from it and I move forward. I don't just keep stuffing up. But I think that's far more honest than to just be like this, right? Um... So don't be afraid to ask us how we are. It's amazing how few people have actually asked me how I am. But, um, and I'm not in America, you know, so I hope that that's maybe a different story if you live in America and you love black people and African-Americans particularly. So my friends, a real reflection, a little bit rambling. Thank you so much for bearing with me. And um, yeah, I'll see you in the next one. <laughs> Kia ora, my loves.